Hey friends, Devin here with another episode of Cool Prints. That's right, it's another one of those videos where I talk about a whole bunch of random prints that aren't necessarily related, but I just want to share them. And we're starting here in my bedroom not to share the items on this shelf, but to actually talk about the shelf itself. It's kind of an interesting use case of 3D printing because my girlfriend and I found these shelves while shopping at a thrift store. We got a really cool deal. They were like brand new, fully packaged IKEA shelves. We got them home and then we realized they're not actually wall mounting shelves. They're meant to be used with this whole rack system. Back in the day, that might have stopped me in the tracks, or at least I would have had to buy some more hardware to figure out how to mount these things to the wall. But thanks to 3D printing, I was able to come up with a pretty quick and cool solution. So here are the shelves assembled as they were intended, made for that rack system, which I clearly don't have. So it's got this special hardware meant for hooking onto that system, but in my case, we're gonna have to improvise. So my solution was to remove this little peg part and replace that with my own 3D printed part that fits right in its place. The difference is my part also connects to the top of this little metal bracket and creates a more rigid frame, and it also has the holes needed to mount this onto the wall. So with my part in place, it's now easy enough to just go ahead and use some regular old drywall screws to mount this up against my wall. So there's one shelf, and there's two shelves. Not bad. Now these shelves are ready to display some other cool prints. At this point, you might be thinking that I'm awfully trusting in these 3D printed parts to hold up this whole shelf and all my prized prints. And I am, because I've got a secret weapon. It's called Nylon X Filament. This is a filament provided by Matter Hackers, and it's a nylon carbon fiber composite filament that creates crazy strong parts. Now this filament does require some special conditions. You can see I used that print dry filament dryer. I also put a bag over my printer to create some kind of a heated chamber to prevent warping of these long parts. And I also used that fancy Olsen Ruby nozzle in order to deal with this really abrasive filament. But with all those things combined, I was able to get this really clean print. And like I said, this stuff is unbelievably strong. It's also got that really cool matte carbon fiber look to it, which I really like. With a filament like this, I can confidently tighten these screws really nice and tight in a way that might crack PLA plastic or even ABS. But with this Nylon X, I'm really confident that I've got a rather sturdy shelf here at least strong enough to hold up my prints. All right, so there's the story of how I was able to make use of these really nice shelves by mounting them onto the wall with some fancy 3D printed mounts. And I actually wanna show you some more uses of this really neat Nylon X material. But to do that, we've gotta go down to the garage. All right, here we are in the garage. All my 3D printers are back there. But did you know I also have a CNC? Probably not, because I haven't done a single video about it yet. We'll get to that. But today I want to share some cool 3D prints that I made for the CNC. First of all, notice this awesome enclosure. My dad actually made this out of wood, like some old, old-timey mystery man. And uh, he actually does a lot of work behind the scenes for this channel. So every like in this video is a thanks, dad. Yeah, this enclosure is super cool. It's got this giant lift-up door. Like that. It's got a giant plexiglass window so you can see everything that's going on in there and keep the dust from flying all over those 3D printers. And well, yeah, like I said, it's mostly made of wood, but you might notice some 3D prints. Probably the first thing you'll see is this logo down here, that little make anything emblem. And that's the same old file that I used when I made the logo for my pegboards. This time around, I just scaled the file down so that it fits better in the space that we're gonna put it. And instead of using a stencil to align all of these letters perfectly, I took a bit of a quick and dirty approach by taking this painter's tape and sticking it down sticky side up. And then I stuck all these parts down to put them in the right place. I did use a ruler so that I have a bit of a straight edge for reference, but for the most part, I just eyeballed the spacing of all these letters and made sure it looked good. Then I just applied a thin layer of E6000 to each of these letters and then once again, just eyeballing it and making sure to try to keep everything nice and straight, I stuck this whole piece of tape down onto the acrylic and just made sure to 
press everything down so that the glue is sticking the pieces to the acrylic. After 48 hours, I removed the tape and we're left with just those letters floating on top of this acrylic sheet and it creates a really cool effect. The other thing I printed on this door specifically are these little uh, parts of the handle. So the handle itself was just some old pipe from a shower curtain or something that we were gonna throw out. And I figured why not make some custom mounts so that we can use that and get these nice metal handles. So we cut that pole down to length. I measured the tube and I measured the bolts that I had and I built these custom ends that go on the top and bottom. And once again, I printed these with that Nylon X material so that this thing is very sturdy. We don't want the handles falling off of the door and these aren't going anywhere. Now, I also used that same material for one other print and that's this thing right here. So this is actually an adapter that I've created for the CNC. So to break things down, in a super basic way, the CNC is a lot like a 3D printer, except for instead of building things up, it cuts away at things using a drill bit. And that's connected to this, basically it's a giant Dremel, super powerful motor that spins really fast, tens of thousands of RPMs, and that carves away at whatever material you put on this bed. This thing is controlled by G-code, just like a 3D printer. So we've got this rig, this whole carriage moves forward and back, left and right, and there's also some up and down room here. Now, if you look here, there's not that much up and down space. So there's only so much you can put underneath the bit here. But what I noticed is that there's a lot of wasted space below this carriage. You'll see there's this whole collar that holds onto the bit and that could technically be up higher. So that's why I built this adapter. It's essentially a spacer that goes right here and lifts up the entire rotary tool so that I've got that extra space underneath. Now you can see that there is no wasted space underneath this carriage. It's nothing but that cutting bit. And I've got a lot of extra space underneath. It's a super simple idea, but this piece did have to be extremely strong because any extra wiggle room would affect the quality of the piece. Luckily with this Nylon X, I was able to create a super rigid connection and it's impossible for me to move this by hand. So that adapter is super cool because it actually really improves the function of this machine. And there's actually one other 3D printed part on here that I wanna share. This thing, I printed this thing too, and it's basically a little emergency stop. If the CNC goes out of control, starts cutting into itself or doing something crazy, smack that button and it'll stop right in its tracks. And uh, there's actually a real emergency stop on the CNC itself, but I built this button as a kind of extender so that you can press that button from outside of this containment box. To make this little extender, I salvaged a spring. It's actually from the boppet that I tore apart when I was making my human boppet costume. And that spring is sandwiched between these two prints to create this little springy button. Then all I had to do was drill a hole in this container around the CNC and line that up exactly across from the emergency button on the inside and then I'll glue my little mechanism into place. I did simplify this silver part. At first I was gonna have it clip into place, but I decided it would be more reliable to just use some E6000 glue. And yes, I really do use that E6000 for everything. Once that was dried into place, I reattached the spring and the second part of the print. And there we go. Now we can access that emergency stop button super easily. As long as the CNC is properly positioned, this extender works really well. It presses the button reliably. And of course that's really important because this is for emergency situations. Okay, so that's all my 3D printed upgrades for the CNC so far. I definitely have more planned and I'm actually ready to start using this thing. So if you guys have ideas for CNC projects you'd like to see, the comments is as good a place as any to give me some recommendations. Alas, that is all the time we have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you like this cool prints series. I think it's really nice because I make so many things in a week that there's no way for me to make a full project video on everything that I make. So this is kind of my way of sharing things with you. And hey, thank you for making it this far into the video. 
That makes you part of a very cool, very special minority, and I appreciate that. But that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.